Welcome to Everyday Torah. My name is Traver. I'm going to continue uh, to work through the book of Romans. Uh, we're going to take a look here at uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And of course, uh, you wouldn't want to start in chapter 8. You'd want to go back, start in chapter 1, see the Apostle Paul's line of logic all the way through the book. Uh, the Apostle Paul has worked pretty hard uh, to uh, share about uh, salvation, what the gospel is, how it's, uh, it's just really important that people uh, get away from bondage to sin, find a relationship uh, with Jesus, with Yeshua, give their bodies over to the Spirit, and in the Spirit, uh, walk in righteousness. And the question becomes, what is that righteousness? What does this look like? Now, you know, I... Uh, know that most people who are listening to me, they are evangelicals, and they know that uh, salvation by works is a no-go. It is not the way it works. You know, a lot of times in our world, if we were to go to someone and say, hey, you know, how do you know you're going to heaven? If they give us an answer like, well, you know, I'm basically a good person. Uh, you know, I don't murder people. I don't steal you would know already that that is not how someone gets into uh, heaven. It's not a real relationship with God. Uh, everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. The only way uh, to have eternal life is to have our sin uh, totally uh, taken away, erased, and that can't happen by any good work. Uh, it's got to happen by the blood of a lamb recognizing that Jesus died on the cross for us, raised from the dead, and uh, his blood covers our sin, and it's taken away like that. Now, if someone were to come back to us and say something like, well, so you're saying that uh, I'm saved by grace, so it's not about you know, murdering or how good I am, so does that mean I can go on and murder? You would say, well, of course not. Uh, you are to be saved by grace through faith, but that doesn't give you a license to go do whatever you want. Uh, you now want to uh, walk in the sort of life where you don't murder. And they're like, well, well now I'm back to square one. Well, uh, it's not just about not murdering. It's about not murdering uh, in your heart. You know, there's a, you know, one thing. It's one thing to actually not kill somebody, like murder them. It's a quite another thing to not murder someone in, in your heart. So if we're going to walk in the spirit, it's like, you know, Jesus saying in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, hey, it's not enough to not murder. You can't say to your brother Raka, you can't, you know, it's just, you know, it's bigger than that. So I think these are things that we all understand. Um, but now when we come back to the te a text, the Apostle Paul is going to continue to teach uh, his readers uh, the difference between the law of sin and, uh, walking in righteousness, and what the law of God was powerless to do. In other words, God's instruction given at Sinai uh, was not given so that people uh, could be absolved from sin. It was given to point out sin. Uh, and he's going to make this argument in this text. Now, here's the text in the NASB. Um, I want to just go over real quick to uh, a Greek interlinear. And the reason I'm doing that is I just want you to see here that when Paul uses the word law, it's uh, nomos or nomos. Okay, so we have law here, law here, law here. And let's just say we're to go down here. You know, here law shows up here. And I think the question is, is Paul always talking about the Torah, the law that was given at Sinai? And the answer is no. I think that uh, when evangelical readers read the New Testament, most of the time, unless it's like in your face explicit, every time they're reading law, they think it's the Torah. And that isn't always the case. Sometimes it's the law of sin. So you have to really slow down and see what the context is. Now, what I've done here is I've pre-highlighted, and the reason I've done that is for myself, but also for you, is you can just see this green. Green means good. It means go. Red means no, it means kind of stop, this isn't good. And then we have this blue, an emphasis on God. And we have the yellow, uh, and that would be the Torah. So the law of God being the Torah. And the reason I do that in kind of more of a neutral color, it's not a caution color, it's just neutral, it's just God's instruction. Um, so 
let's just kind of keep that in mind as we work through it. So Paul says, therefore, there's now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you understand the gospel, uh, the very start of the good news is that we are not good enough. We need to be saved by grace through faith. Faith in what? That Jesus, the, the Messiah, has died for us, and by faith we are adopted into the family of God, and there's no, we are not condemned. So when, whatever infractions you might have, no matter how you have broken the Torah, um, or just sinned in your heart, uh, even apart from the Torah, uh, there's no condemnation because uh, Jesus' blood covers all that. For the law of the Spirit, so what kind of law here? The law of the Spirit of life. So when, you're, when you have the Spirit, and that in part is what the New Covenant's about, is when we give our, our heart and to Jesus and we begin to follow Jesus, uh, the Spirit indwells in us. And so that Spirit is the law of the Spirit. It gives us life in Christ Jesus. It has set you free from the law of sin and death. So by adoption, in faith, the Spirit has set us free from another law, sin, of sin and of death. I think that's simple enough. For what the law could not do, this is the Torah of God, and a lot of Paul's listeners are following the law of God, but it couldn't absolve people from their sin. It could tell them how to live. It could give them... um, It could show them how to walk in righteousness, but it couldn't give them like that regenerative spirit life, okay? So still do it, but that's not how you can have the regenerative spirit working on and going on in your heart. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, in other words, if you're doing the law and you're doing it without the spirit, you're doing it as a cultural practice, which many of them were doing, it is weak. It does nothing. I mean, it might make your society better, but it doesn't really do the job in terms of salvation. But God did something that the law could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, in other words, he became a a human uh, for us, okay? Sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So when he died on the cross as the Passover lamb, he condemned our sin in his flesh. We didn't have to pay the price. Yeshua paid the price. So that the requirement of the law, that we are to be perfect, the law is designed to tell us, hey, this is what perfection looks like. This is, uh, you know, and, and Paul refers to it as a ministry of death in that it is tr- it, the, the law is designed pre-salvation to show you where your sin is. So you can see, hey, I, I don't measure up. I have infractions. I have broken the law. Oh, I'm going to turn off my watch here. Sorry. Uh, and so the Apostle Paul uh, says it's a ministry of death. But post-salvation, what happens? It becomes a ministry of life. It switches in our lives. It becomes a roadmap uh, by which we can walk and live and move and have our our being. So if you read Psalm 119, that's what it's all about. If you read Psalm 1, that's what it's all about. All right. So so the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, okay, to be perfect, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So if you're trying to do it in your in the flesh, just trying to be good for being good's sake, that's not going to do it. We need to be walking by the spirit. Verse 5. For those who are in a, in accord with the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. That's easy enough. But those who are in accord with the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So if you have the Spirit of God uh, living in you, it should manifest in the things of the Spirit. You're walking in the Spirit, keeping in step with the Spirit. Verse 6, for the mind set on the flesh is death. So uh, you're going to be walking in death if you're living out of the flesh. So no matter how good you look externally, you could be following the, the Torah. You know, it would be a, the dynamic equivalent today of like going to church and, you know, maybe you're in the Rotary Club and, you know, maybe you're doing a bunch of social justice stuff. But if you're doing that in the flesh, it's still going to end in death. But the mind set on the spirit is life and peace, life and shalom. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God. So um, if you 
watch my other videos on uh, Romans. The Apostle Paul in chapter 2 basically says, hey, all you law keepers, and they're not walking by the Spirit, he says, really, do you keep the law? If you really look at your lives, he says, you're not. You say don't steal, but do you steal? You don't murder, but do you murder? You know, things like that. So if you're if you're in the flesh, if you're walking um, you know, without the Spirit, uh, you're really not going to give the members of your body over to the law of God. Uh, you might uh, you might be able to do it for a day or two, but uh, you continue to fall short. And I think we've all had that experience. For it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh, they can't please God. So ultimately what Paul is going to basically say is you— you can't be walking in the flesh, but the only way you can walk in the Spirit is to have a genuine relationship with Messiah Yeshua by um, recognizing before God that you want to repent of your sin and accept uh, what Yeshua has done for you as the Passover lamb and begin to walk in his ways, give your life over to uh, Yeshua. And that's one of the things I always harp on is I think in Christianity too often we say, hey, do you want to invite Jesus into your life? It's the wrong question. Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh wants to invite you into his life. Do you want to be a part of God and a part of God's kingdom? Do you want to walk with God? That's the real question. So I wish we would rephrase it, honestly. So however... Uh, Okay, so uh, verse 8, and those who are in the flesh, they can't please God. Uh, And in fact, uh, in Hebrews, right, uh, we've got to be walking by faith. It's impossible to please God if we're not walking in faith. Verse 9, however, you, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So what Paul is saying is, if you have accepted Messiah Yeshua and Uh, you're a part of the new covenant, if you've done that, uh, you are not to walk in the flesh. You're walking in the spirit, and he's trying to tell them what to do. Now, there's a little bit of a complication here, and that is some people were accepting Jesus as their Messiah, but then they were becoming uh, legally Jewish. This is the topic of Galatians by uh, becoming circumcised to be a part of the circumcision group. Not that circumcision is a bad thing, but uh, Leviticus 12 uh, three says to do that but if you're doing it as a way um, to uh, be a part of a a a Jewish sect then that's not good it's kind of like um it's like baptism uh, if someone's being baptized be think because they think that by baptism now they're a Christian a genuine Christian that would be wrong baptism is an outward symbol and expression a thing that we do now if I were to say hey if you're just trying to get baptized so you can, you know, do what your friends are doing and you're being baptized because now you think that makes you Christian, should that now mean that no one should be baptized? Well, that's not true either. Get baptized, but get baptized for the right reasons. All right, I think that's said enough there. Verse 9, again, however, you are not to dwell in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. He's like, really check your heart. Have you... Um, become a part of the new covenant because you believe what Jesus, uh, Jesus is the Messiah, died on the cross, rose, and now that spirit lives in you. Check your heart. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Messiah, of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. So If Christ is in you, that sin is dead. The sin is taken away, separated from you as far as the east is from the west. But the Spirit is is alive in you that God, His righteousness, righteousness is now instilled in your body. Now give the members of your body over to righteousness as defined by the Torah. Now go do the law. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So uh, it's all by the spirit. You know, I think a lot of people who are listening to me know that it's by the spirit. They just don't know the law part. But 
when Paul was talking to his audience, they knew the law part, not the spirit part. So what does Paul have to do? He has to talk about the spirit thing over and over and over again. When I tell you, it usually sounds redundant. Like, I get it, I get it, I get it. Well, they didn't get it. What Paul didn't have to do with them is say, hey, you need to observe the Torah, God's instruction in righteousness. He doesn't say that over and over again. Uh, But I have to tell you over and over again because a lot of people don't get it. So we have to like say, I have to as a teacher say it over and over and over and over again which I am, as you know. All right, we will pick up in uh, verse 12 next time. Uh, Sorry about my watch going off. I did not know, but it is what it is. And uh, remember this, our Messiah, our model, walked in that Torah every day of his life. He wasn't legalistic, but he did it. And I'll tell you what, that's the kind of life you and I, as believers, we should want to live. Walk in the Spirit, give the members of your body over to God's instruction, and then you'll, you'll be walking in life. And that's why we call it Everyday Torah. See you next time.